The topic of this presentation and subsequent paper is how we can use the JK Tech SMC testing SCSE parameter for SAGMIL selection and design. The SCSC was a parameter jointly developed back in 2015 by JK Tech and SMC testing. It is a specific energy. It's the specific energy of a SAGMIL circuit as simulated using the variable rates model in JK SimMet. The purpose behind its development was to help compare different A times B values in a more meaningful um, and linear fashion. The problem being that A times B is not linear with respect to SAGMIL specific energy. So for example, if one halved the A times B value and remember that higher A times B values mean a softer OR. So if you halved an A times B value, it does not mean that the specific energy would double. It's a non-linear response, and that makes it difficult to compare the effectiveness of A times B as a measure of SAGMIL hardness. The SCSE stands for SAG Circuit Specific Energy. And as I said before, the specific energy is simulated using the variable rates model and it's simulated from what we've called a standard circuit. And that standard circuit, and I'm going to show you in the next slide what that standard circuit looks like, is a fixed design and operating conditions. And therefore, the SCSE is only valid for that circuit and that set of operating conditions. And if you want to learn a bit more about the SCSE and its development, at the bottom of this slide, you can see the paper that JK Tech and SMC testing published back in 2015 during the SAD conference. And there are two links there which will enable you to download the paper and also download a pricey of that paper in PDF format. These are the details of the standard circuit. It is a SAG mill with a pebble crusher. It has a L over D, a length to diameter ratio of 0.5, 15% ball charge, 100% of the grate is pebble ports and the apertures of the pebble ports are 56 millimeters. The open area is 7% and the Tromlin screen aperture uh, that follows the sag mill and whose oversize is fed to the pebble crusher has an aperture of 12 millimeters. The SCSE only relates to the standard circuit, which I described before, and hence as a design tool, it has very limited application. However, if we could develop equations that use the SCSE as an input, it is possible to extend the applicable range that the SCSE effectively applies and therefore make it far more useful for design purposes. And the way we've approached developing such equations is to use data from a series of simulations using the same variable rates model and augmented the results from that with published data from operating SAGMIL circuits. Let me show you how we've used, for example, simulation to develop these equations using as our example, the length to diameter ratio, the aspect ratio. And in this table here are summarized the results 
of a whole series of simulations using the variable rates model that we did where we changed the diameter and the length to give us a range of L on D ratios. And you can see here we ranged from 0.3 to 0.9. And then we recorded what the simulated Sagmill specific energy was in each of those cases, keeping constant all other things such as or hardness, and therefore the SCSE for each of these would be the same. Open area, pebble port size, etc., feed size were all kept exactly the same. And we ended up with a table that looks like this. Now remember that the standard circuit that the SCSE comes from has an L over D ratio of 0.5. So this value here, 8.42, actually is the SCSE for the A and B values that we used for this simulation. What we did next was then normalize those results with respect to the SCSE condition. And hence the SCSE is now one, because everything else, all the other data, are now represented with respect to that SCSE condition. And when we plot these data with relative L over D on the X axis, so that's the L over D relative to the SCSE condition of 0.5, and on the Y axis we plot relative Sagmill specific energy, that's the Sagmill specific energy relative to the SCSE, we find we get this power function, which suggests that as we change L over D, the Sagmill specific energy varies according to a power function with an exponent of 0.34. We now have the basis for a modified SCSE value, and we've called this modified SCSE value the advanced SCSE, and put it in equation of this form here, and you can see the input is the SCSE and our new L on D ratio, we call that the design L on D ratio. And here we can see our 0.34 exponent in the power function form of this term here, which we have called a design factor, a DF factor. And if you remember Bond in his equations and Roland, they developed a series of EF factors for the Bond equation. They called them efficiency factors. In our case here, we've called these design factors. And just as here we have a design factor for aspect ratio, we have similarly developed equations that give us DF values for F80, pebble port open area, pebble port aperture, trommel screen aperture, ball load, and what we've called extended hardness. Now, this extended hardness uh, design factor came about because the variable rates model in its development um, early in the 1990s, we had limited amounts of, of data given the developmental stage of SAGMILS and specifically um, SABC circuits in, in those days. So the model database that we developed the model on had A times B uh, ranges of some around about 30 to 70. And we decided we wanted to extend that range in this advanced SCSE equation. Uh, so we looked at um, further data sets uh, in the range 25 up to 150 A times B and found that in that range we needed a factor to modify the SCSE and we've called that the extended hardness design factor. The general equation that we finally ended up with 
looks like this, where the advanced SCSE equals the SCSE. And to remind you that every time you do a JK drop weight test or an SMC test, this value is reported to you in the standard report. And that SCSE advanced value is then a function of K, a calibration factor, and we'll get onto that in a minute, plus DF values from DF1 through to DF7. And each one of these DFs then has a little equation attached to it. We've seen what the L on D equation looks like. Some of the equations are of a similar form. Some of them are a little bit more complicated. We find here with the pebble port open area and aperture, um, the amounts of uh, pebbles that are produced and the amounts of pebbles that are produced has a direct impact on the specific energy. Those amounts of pebbles interact to some extent with what the feed size is. So um, there is a certain amount of crossover in those equations, but let's just say that every single one of these DF values has its own little equation. So given the design and the conditions that you're looking at, you put all your design conditions into each one of these equations. They generate then DF values one to seven. You plug them into this equation here, you know the K factor, you then should in theory have a reasonable prediction of the specific energy of that particular design that you have chosen. The SAG circuit data that we used to obtain our K factor, and also actually we uh, use these data to help develop the F80 relationship, all come from published sources. Most of them come from one or other of the SAG conferences that have uh, taken place over the years, and the data come from these circuits listed here. We ended up with an equation, a general equation, that gave us a correlation that looks like this, and an accuracy. And uh, you can see here the observed SAG mill specific energy from those published data, from those circuits that I described before. And here on the y-axis is the predicted SAG mill specific energy. And we were quite pleased with both the correlation and the accuracy that we obtained from this particular approach. Need to remind you that all of those circuits were SABCA. So they're sagmill circuits which are closed with a pebble crusher and where the crushed pebbles are returned to the sagmill feed, as opposed to the SABCB variant where the crushed pebbles are sent directly to the ball mill circuit. And we are currently working on an additional DF factor that accommodates that different change in design. That concludes this presentation. We plan to submit a paper to Minnells Engineering where we'll provide full details of all the equations that I've described uh, in this presentation. Thank you for your attention.